Have you ever thought about building an observatory? I sure have. And for the past 18 months, I've been planning it. And today, finally, we're gonna build the Skyshed pod right here on my rooftop. I'm Rob Lyons, an astrophotographer, and I'm working towards my astronomy degree. Today we're going to be building an observatory up here on the roof, but why would we want to build one in the first place? Typically observatories house massive telescopes that are too big to move. Mine are nowhere near that size. But it is a pain in the neck to break everything down and take it inside when the weather gets bad, and then bring it back up a narrow flight of stairs when the weather gets good again. So having something up on the roof that's permanent would be amazing. Secondly, I have a growing family. We just welcomed my second daughter, and I am really running out of space inside. I've been kicked out of the house. I can no longer store my astronomy equipment inside. So this is gonna be part uh, telescope garage, part office, part video set, and most importantly, my fortress of solitude, my man cave to escape my family when I need a little personal time. So why don't we dive into the details and take a look at the plans. The observatory will be located four stories up at the back of my rooftop deck, where I get the best views of the southern sky. It's tucked behind some privacy walls so my neighbor's views won't be blocked, and there isn't a lot of space up here, so we're going to need a really small footprint. We'll pour a small concrete pad to keep it stable against wind and seismic loads while ensuring it doesn't add too much weight to the roof. The observatory I've chosen is the Skyshed Pod. So originally I was going to put just a big storage box up here, and during that search is actually how I found the pod. It's going to provide the practical storage I need and act as a functioning observatory at the same time, so the best of both worlds. So Skyshed Pods is made right here in Canada by someone named Wayne Parker. Wayne is an avid astronomer and an absolutely excellent astrophotographer, so he really understands what I need from this uh, structure. So after a few months of waiting due to high demand, the pod finally arrived. Three pallets full of parts. To get everything from my underground garage up to my rooftop, I had to carry every single piece of four flights of narrow stairs by hand. The dome was a little too big for the last staircase, so I had to get creative with geometry and do a little bit of bending and some observatory yoga to squeeze it through the doorway. Once I got all the parts and pieces up here to the rooftop, that's when it kind of hit me that this observatory was a little bit bigger and brighter than I had initially anticipated. And I think the word um, conspicuous comes to mind. So at that time I thought, oh, I should probably talk to my neighbors and let them know what I'm up to. And thankfully, they're all really on board with what I do and they gave their blessing for me to build the observatory. And then I thought, you know, should I consult with anyone else? So I reached out to the city and asked if there was maybe any regulations or rules that I would have to adhere to to put this on my roof. And sure enough, there were plenty. I had to come up with a site plan. I had to get a development permit. I had to get a minor amendment to that development permit. I had to write a letter to the head of city planning to um, convince him why I should be allowed to build a few inches taller than is allowable in this zoning district. Um, I had to hire a structural engineer to sign off on my plans and to conduct inspections and I needed a building permit along with several inspections from the city afterwards. And of course, with all of these things, there is a cost associated with them. So I'm going to internalize all this bureaucratic trauma and focus it because do you know what? I'm going to need the forces of both good and evil for what comes next. Let's get building. First, I rolled up my fake grass and removed the pavers to take some of the weight off the roof. Those things were 88 pounds each. And of course, I had to take them down those four flights of stairs to store them in my garage. And in exchange, I lugged up 38 bags of concrete, each weighing 66 pounds. So I built a basic form out of two by fours and I used this dimple board instead of a classic vapor barrier and that allows a little bit of water to flow between the roofing membrane and the slab. A really nice little addition. After a city inspection, I mixed and poured the concrete and I split it into two sessions because it was 30 plus degrees Celsius outside and I really didn't want to die of heat stroke before getting my first light. So as I mentioned several times and will for the rest of my life, that was very difficult getting all that concrete up here and getting that part done. But thankfully, the rest of this project is a lot easier. 
the dome quadrants and the walls bolt together in just a few minutes. And I used gym mats for flooring to cushion any potential drops. This is the same material that everybody uses on the floor of their observatories. Super cheap too. Roller blade wheels are added to the tops of the wall so that the dome can rotate smoothly. And after that, it's just a matter of some screws, a few lengths of weather stripping, a lot of Lexel caulking, and some heavy lifting to get the dome in place. Yes, I did that solo. So I did actually receive a bunch of generous offerings of help from friends, family, and even strangers online on social media. But I think after that whole 18 month process and huge expense, I really just wanted the satisfaction of building this observatory piece by piece with my own two hands. Um, so whether it's pride or stupidity, you be the judge. To finish up, I hammer drilled a few holes into the concrete slab and then I bolted the observatory to the slab using some large anchors. And then I sealed everything up with more caulking. Honestly, I used so much Lexel on this thing and I still have a ton of stuff I need to seal and need more. So Lexel, um, you know, we're looking for a sponsor here on Rob's observatory. So uh, call me. For power, I ended up just cutting a hole in the side of the dome and running an extension cord in. And the reason I did this is because I don't have a permanent power situation up here for the observatory. This is really like a bit of a temporary structure and I didn't want to do anything too elaborate. So I cut the hole inside, I ran an extension cord in and I have that connected to a CASA smart power strip. This is amazing because every single plug has its own on off switch. It's also Wi-Fi enabled so I can control every single plug from an app on my phone. I cannot recommend these CASA smart strips and outdoor plugs enough. They're rugged, uh, they're water resistant, they're super good for astronomy needs, and I've thrown some links below if you want to grab some for yourself. So to put the icing on the cake, I've added some LED neon light strips, a sign, my AI assistant Victor, another consequence of being kicked out of the house. And finally, after 18 months of bureaucracy, a few days of hard work, uncountable tubes of Lexel and more money than I care to admit, we finally have an observatory. This is so surreal. From staring at the pieces sitting on my roof for well over a year to actually being here inside the finished space is an absolute dream come true. And it's pretty cozy in here, but it does have space for all my essentials. My Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope, some tool drawers, some extra storage shelves for random gear, a fan for when it's hot, and a boat warmer for when it's cold, and even a chair to sit in. Not bad. Almost forgot, just added this 3D printer. It's a Bamboo Labs P1S. Unbelievable, amazing to have a 3D printer in-house to print custom parts a la carte. And uh, to show you what I mean, working on some cable routers for my Hyperstar, custom fit, and uh, just incredible to be able to have this in here. Again, no space in the house, so this guy, lives in the observatory. So I did have to make a couple compromises to make the pod work up here. First, I couldn't add any expansion bays for more storage, which would have been amazing, but apparently you need a certain distance of clear space around a doorway for fire regulations or whatever. So couldn't do that. Secondly, you see that I have a tri-pier here instead of a regular pier. I can't have a pier mounted in the ground because I'm on a roof. 
but that um, limitation actually turns into a bit of a positive in my situation because of the zenith. One of the biggest considerations is that you can't shoot directly up at the zenith. The lip of the roof blocks it just a little bit. So what's happening here in my case is that because I'm on a tripe here and I can move it, I can actually shoot around that limitation. I can offset my pier and be able to shoot straight up from that location. So that's pretty handy. With a bigger telescope, you know, like a, an 11 or a 14 inch Edge HD, I don't think I'd be able to do that. I'd have to take the roof off. Speaking of which, another thing I don't have room for, a bit of a theme here in this video, is that I can't get the PZ table, which is a little table that connects to the Skyshed pod. It allows you to actually just roll the roof off onto it, and that opens up the zenith for viewing. But again, no space. So in my situation, it's working out really great. Uh, you'll see here, my telescope is actually set up in the north of the pod, the front of the pod, I call it. And I'm shooting Cassiopeia and Cepheus right now. And when I'm done shooting that stuff, I'm actually going to move the telescope and peer to the back or the south side of the pod to shoot Andromeda next. So I am able to move it around and work around the zenith, so it's not a problem so far. Uh, the other thing that's great is that once I'm open and shooting, I don't actually have to rotate or move the dome at all during the night. I just set it, forget it, I go to bed, I let it shoot, and I've never had a problem so far of the scope shooting the edge of the pod during the night. It's been working out great. Okay, so one of the things about the Skyshed pod that I've heard, a rumor, is that when Wayne was designing this pod, he based it on the pod from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. So there's a little something that I need to try. Open the pod bay doors, Victor. I'm sorry, Rob. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. You cheaped out and bought the pod instead of the pod S. You'll have to open it yourself. Well, he's got me there. Alright, let's talk water and leaks. We recently had a storm warning here in Vancouver, so I took all the telescopes which are normally set up outside the telescope and covered, and I brought them all in here to keep them safe because I was worried about wind more than anything. It was great not having to haul everything back down and inside the house. Now while the storm didn't hit hard, it did expose a couple of leaks at the dome's pivot points, which I'm going to have to fix. Otherwise the structure is bone dry. I've since added a vinyl cover to keep things extra protected for the rainy season, and that has kept the inside 100% watertight. And the vinyl cover works perfectly in the snow as well. So the vinyl dome cover while being an additional expanse is absolutely critical here in the Pacific Northwest where we have a very wet climate. So this project has taken a long time and at great expense. And what was it all for? I think it's time that we savor the fruits of our labors and take a look at the first light image and the second light image and the third light image. I believe that every observatory should have a name, so this one is called the Kitsilano Observatory to honor the community that it's now a part of. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I couldn't cover everything. You may have questions about observatories uh, in general, about the Skyshed pod, about my telescope, whatever it is. Drop me a comment, I'll respond, and uh, we'll keep this going. Um, also, we're going to be doing a lot of videos from here at the Kitsilano Observatory, so if you want more great astronomy content, subscribe to Rob Observatory. All right, my friends, remember, the stars belong to everyone, so get out there and see for yourself. <laughs> <laughs>